2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 13 in the New Living Translation, you will see these words written by that aging apostle in the latter portion of his life, where he eventually found his way to Rome uh, to spend some time with Paul. Both of them uh, ended up being executed in Rome. And uh, Paul, of course, was beheaded. And uh, Peter, they were going to crucify him because he always talked about the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and so I say, particularly those who call of ministry, um, you remember your times of faithfulness, but you also remember your times of faithlessness. And so Peter was one always to recall the crucifixion because that's the scene he wasn't around for. And so he remembers that and even references that. And so when they went to crucify him, he said, no, crucify me upside down for I'm not worthy to be crucified upright like my Lord. Hear now this season's apostles' word in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. This is my second letter to you, dear friends, and in both of them I have tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and to refresh your memory. I want you to remember what the holy prophets said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come, mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. They deliberately forget that God made the heavens long ago by the word of his command. And he brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. And by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. They are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. But you n must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire. And the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live. Looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along on that day, he will set the heavens on fire, and the elements will melt away in the flames. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and new earth he has promised, a world that's filled with God's righteousness. Thus far the word of the Lord. Now Holy Ghost speaks Set this preacher as a flaming fire an angel ministering to your, your word, to your people. Anoint my eyes to see, my ears to hear, my mouth to speak, and my mind to perceive the will of God and the word of God for your people at this hour. And after that, you've spoken your word, confirm your word with signs and wonders following. Heal, save, deliver, and set free in the name of Jesus. Now set this preacher on fire. Turn him loose and let him preach. And I'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm going to 
for just a few moments, there is no escape. There is no escape. Would you tell somebody wherever you're sitting or stationed, there is no escape. You can text them and tell them. You can Facebook message them and tell them. Uh, you can let them know through YouTube channel or tweet. There is no escape. Climate change has been a factor in increasing the risk and extent of wildfires in the western United States. Research shows that changes in climate create warmer, drier conditions, increased drought, and a longer fire season are boosting these increases in wildfire risk. News sources go on to say that scientists predict that there will be more heat waves and longer periods of drought as temperatures increase, making the environment more susceptible to wildfires. That was December 11, 2020, by the way. Uh, the news, source, news sources also go on to say that the largest fire in California history is the seven-county August complex set in August of 2020 in the throes of a pandemic. It burned more than a million acres across Mendocino, Humboldt, Trinity, Tahoma, Glen Lake, and Calusia counties destroyed 935 stru structures. The fire, fire died in the massive blaze. The 10 deadliest fires in history occurred in the year, three of them occurred in the year 1871. I'll come back to that maybe later on in the series of preaching. One other news source says the world is on fire, and not just from forest fires or volcanoes. Across the globe, hundreds of fires burn low and slow on dirty fuel beneath the earth, smoldering for decades or even centuries. These fires are known as coal seam fires. They occur underground when a layer of coal in the earth's crust is ignited. Over in the Pacific Ocean there is this phenomenon called the ring of fire. The ring of fire is literally a line of fires and volcanoes and earthquakes that is 24,900 miles long and is erupting continuously. Right now, my brothers and my sisters, 40% of the world is on fire. There is no escape. There is no escape. What can you conclude from the text, Pastor, that we can walk away from can we take just a couple of things today to walk away from as we read this first century text? Peter, in the latter portion of his life, is reminding the saints of God of what is about to happen. He reminds them to stay faithful. He reminds them to remember the commandments. He reminds them to uh, stimulate wholesome thinking. He, he reminds them, to, hey, remember what the old prophets said long ago? Remember what Jesus, our Lord and Savior, commanded. Remember what the apostles have said uh, uh, by, by the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to remind you that you're in these last days. This is 1,900 years ago. You're in these last days, and there are going to be people who scoff and say climate change does not exist. There are going to be people who scoff uh, and, and, and say uh, 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 that, that there's nothing wrong with our behavior, men may marrying men, women marrying women, scoffers will come. They're going to mock the truth. They're going to mock 
the truth and say, uh, we're going to follow our own desires. And you got to be very careful because now you, you don't know what is true, what is false. That's why you have to have the sword of the Lord to help you discern what you're hearing so you can know what is true and what is a lie. And many of them are saying uh, in that day uh, and now in this day, well, y'all been talking about that Jesus coming back for so long, and he hadn't come back yet. Things are just like they always were. I want to have, give you a spiritual flashback. That was the same conversation they, they had when Noah was preaching for 120 years. He kept preaching, repent, repent, for the world's about to be destroyed by water. And they laughed at him. They mocked him. They had parties and made jokes about him until that day that the Lord closed up the ark and it started raining and would not stop. They forgot God's word to God's people. And then Peter drops this 10th verse on us. But the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. <laughs> if you knew when a thief was coming, you would have prepared for the thief. If you knew that a thief was coming to, to, to steal and to, and to kill and destroy, you would have been, been had, had security and everything ready for that. But that's how the day of the Lord comes. It comes when you are not expecting it to come. But we can't be that way, believers. Do I have a witness today? Uh, let, let me just cover a few things here in the text that I see. First of all, um, I conclude as I read this text that, number one, there's nowhere to run. If 40% of the earth is on fire and 70% of it is covered by water that's heating up uh, and is causing the glaciers to melt, which is then causing additional gases to be emitted, which is causing the warming of the earth, uh, then there tells me that there's nowhere to run. Uh, yeah, that, that there's nowhere to run. Uh, I, I've been listening to, um, I, I watched a movie the other day, and they made a reference in the movie to Nina Simone. And, and, and so um, uh, I said, oh, yeah, I remember her. And then I remembered the movie Thomas Crown Affair. And in that movie, they used this song that she sang, released in October of 1965, Oh, Cinema Man, Where You Gonna Run To? Sinner man, where are you going to run to? Where are you going to run to? All on that day. Well, I run to the rock. Please hide me. I run to the rock. Please hide me. I run to the rock. Please hide me. Lord, all on that day. But the rock cried out, I can't hide you. The rock cried out, I can't hide you. The rock cried out, I can't hide you. I ain't going to hide you, guy, all on that day. I said, rock, what's the matter with you, rock? Don't you see I need you, rock? Lord, 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 all on that day. This is 1965. So I run to the river. It was bleeding. I run to the sea, it was bleeding. I run to the sea, it was bleeding all on that day. So I run to the river, it was boiling. I run to the sea, it was boiling. I run to the sea, it was boiling all on that day. And that is 55 years ago. I run to the sea and they're boiling. Uh, watch what Peter does in verse 1. He said, this is my second letter to you, friends. And in in both of the letters, I'm trying to do two things. I'm trying to stimulate your wholesome thinking. He tells you why he's writing. And I'm trying to refresh your memory. Uh, because sometimes in the midst of all of the posts and the tweets and, uh, you know, the devices and all of the electronic stuff that's going on in our world, we, we just get lulled to sleep. And so we need to have our thinking stimulated, and sometimes we need to have our memory refreshed. We need to hit the refresh brother to re be reminded child of God that you are a vessel of the Lord's grace. You are a vessel of the Lord's spirit. You are a vessel of honor that God has called you for a divine destiny and a purpose. And so sometimes you have to hit the refresh button and re be reminded you are a child of God and you can walk in this world like this world you have to remember that this world is not your home. And if you're looking for some place to run in this world, there's, there's nowhere to, nowhere to run, nowhere to run, nowhere to run. And um, how, how many of you 
re remember getting whippings when you grew up. And uh, I, I, I had to learn this one the hard way. Um, uh, how, how many thought you could outrun mama and dad in them when they were going to whip you? <laughs> yeah, and um, I never forget the, <laughs> the the parsonage that we lived in in Hartford, Connecticut. It was a big parsonage, and it had the front stairs and the back stairs. You know, back stairs went down into the kitchen, front came down into the, the front area of the home. And so I never forget my Aunt Emily. She was very mischievous, and she would come around when she first came to the house, and she looked around. She said, oh, William Rochelle, there's a lot of places to run and hide around here. And, uh, yeah, we tried it, but it didn't work. Hello, somebody. Amen. Because you ever try to run from a whipping, and then you find out when you get whipped, you're getting whipped for two reasons. You're getting whipped for the reason that you were going to get whipped in the first place, and then you're getting whipped because you tried to run from the whipping for what you did in the first place. And so where are you going to run? Because there is no place to run. Uh, you, and in the home, we learn I'm going to have to eat here. I'm going to have to sleep here at some point in time. And so there is nowhere to run unless you just run away. But then you quickly realize that I can't get in uh, out there what I can get in here. There is nowhere to run. I'm already at point number two. Now, I don't know if there's, there's nowhere to run, sinner man. There's nowhere to hide. Look at verse 7. And by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire. Mm. They are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years is like a day. When you have nowhere to run, I know. Maybe there's a place I can hide. <laughs> How's that working out? You do know that hide and seek was the first human game ever designed in the earth. Yeah, it's called hide and seek. Um, and and you, you remember hide and seek when you were growing up? And, and, and you know, you, uh, you, you, you uh, well, we would call the tree would be home and you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, any around my, anybody around my base or something like that. And then you'd go to hide, you go seeking people where they're hiding. And if they can get to the place and tag home, uh, then they'll be safe. But there are very various uh, uh, variations when you're inside versus when you're outside playing. Uh, but you, you do know the first hide and seek game is is in the Bible. You didn't know that. You didn't know that. Oh, oh, come on, parents. You need to teach your children that the first hide-and-seek game is in the Bible. You remember Adam and Eve. They went and ate the piece of fruit they weren't supposed to eat. And then here comes God looking to talk with them. Hey, Adam, where are you? He said, I was hiding. How do you know how to hide? You must have done something that is not uh, uh, does not qualify you to be in the light of my presence. Who told you how to hide? You must have learned something. And so early on, we learn when I can't run, I can just hide it. Hello, somebody. Uh, did you eat some of the, the, uh, 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 the, the cookies that I just made? No, ma'am. Well, what's those crumbs on your mouth? You trying to? You're trying to hide. We're always trying to hide. And we're trying to hide in front of a God who sees everything. What did Adam say to God in the first hide and seek? I was naked, so I hid. I made you naked. I made you like you are. You are who you are because I made you. I know everything about you. You haven't realized that yet. Southwest Airlines commercial, you know the commercial? And somebody will invariably make a mistake or do something wrong. Uh, one of the one I like is when they're on a uh, guy is on the Zoom call and he has uh, you know he has his shorts on or something like his uh, underwear on. And so the Zoom call, there's some happy news in the meeting, and he stands up, and everybody sees him with his underwear on. And then you hear the announcer on the commercial for Southwest Airlines ask this question: Want to get away? 
<laughs> How many of you have ever done something wrong and messed up so bad in your life that you what? Want to get away? I want to get away. If I can't run, I want to hide somewhere. I want to get away from the inevitability of my of dealing with my mistake. Uh, that's what. And and and, and the other, the other day it was interesting. The day that we dedicated the trailers up in uh, up in Lanham and uh, Senator uh, uh, Pinsky was there and several of our delegates and assembly persons were there and uh, it was on that same day. And so I remember. Um, I think it was Council, uh, our, the chair of the Food Security Task Force, uh, Chair Todd Turner, when he came up in his comments, he said, isn't it interesting that here we are on this day dedicating the trailers for people who are hungry and there are, uh, and a billionaire just took off, another billionaire just took off into space. And, and so I, I said to my, I made note to myself, I got to preach a sermon, billionaires in space, amen. I got to preach a sermon. And isn't it interesting when you deal with the world and all of its problems and all of its challenges, and I'm not accusing Richard Branson or Jeff Bezos of trying to run to get away, but they keep talking about, well, space is the new frontier. Why is it the new frontier? It's not going to be the new frontier. You messed up the only frontier that you have. It's 40% on fire. It's covered with pandemic and disease. Right now, seven variants of the uh, COVID-19 are reclaiming people people who have already been vaccinated. So if that ought to tell you, at least let me get the vaccination so I can try to survive in some kind of way. And so you can run wherever you want. If you go down to the depths of the ocean, you can run, but you can't hide. You can run to outer space, but you cannot hide from God. What does the psalmist say? He said over in Psalm 139, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, I can go hide in the dark. And the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you, Lord. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. And I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Listen to the psalmist. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were already written in your book before one of them came to be. You knew when I started. You knew when I ended before I even existed. There's no place to run. There's no place to hide. And... I've painted myself into a homiletical corner, Reverend Ellis, because I've got two problems, and I need a solution. And the, the scripture ought to bring a solution that I, 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 it's it's pretty bad r r right now. Um, we, you, we're getting ready. We're already going through a horrific summer right now, and when the fall comes, it's the, this this horrible pandemic is going to cause children. Uh, to be hospitalized at massive rates if we don't do something. And while that's going on, then there are volcanoes that are erupting. 40% of the world is on fire. Uh, a billionaire's taken off in space. And uh, we've got trash in the ocean floating the size of Texas. And it, it, it's just a mess. It's just a mess. It's just a mess. There's nowhere to run. That's the best I can do. There's nowhere to hide. So what is there? Since there's no escape, may I suggest to you in my final summary that there is an exit. <laughs> there is an exit. Verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as the thief. It is coming. You can't run from it. You can't hide from it. It's coming. The heavens will pass away with a terrible noise. Oh, it's going to be loud. 
the elements themselves will disappear in fire. That's already happening. And the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. In other words, what's happening on the earth? You deserve it. Oh, oh, I wish I didn't have to be the prophet to read this text today, but I have to read the text because the book stands true. It stands true eternally. Everything happening in the earth, you deserve it. You violate my principles. You pollute my water. You, uh, you destroy my creation. Now you're reaping what you sowed. You deserve it. Get on a rocket ship and try to escape if you want to, but I got you there too. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed, here, here's our exit. You ready for it? Verse 11. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live. Oh, you missed your shout just now. You, you ought to be running around and say, whew, God, I ain't got to run. I ain't got to hide. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> what, what, what do you have to do? I have to be holy and godly. Ha, that's my exit right there. That, that's my exit right there. That's, that, that, that's, 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 how, that's how I make it through. That's, that's how I can walk through the fire and I won't be burned. That's how I can go through the flood and it won't, I won't drown me. A thousand will fall at my right side, 10,000 at my left, but it will not come nigh to me. He said, even though they throw you in prison, I got you. The hairs of your head are, are numbered, holy and godly life. Here's my exit. Uh, and when you take the exit, here's what you look forward to when you get off the exit. Verse 12, looking forward to the day of God. <laughs> You're looking forward to the day of God. And matter of fact, you're hurrying it along. Hurry up, Jesus, because it's getting crazy down here. Hello, somebody. And on that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the flames. Escape suggests how do I get away from something and get to something else? Well, if you look at the course of the world, the highway of this world ends in fiery destruction. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go that way. I don't want to go that way. That's why Jesus said, Come on, Bible students, Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Write this down, write this down. Mother O'Neill, write this down in your notes. Write this down in your notes. Mother, Mother Snowden, write this down. Write this down in your notes. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. Watch Jesus talking about the highway of this world and where it ends up. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. You know how we used to do when we were little? Mom, I want to go such and such. No, you ain't going. Everybody's going. That's exactly why you're not going. We were taught early that just because everyone is doing it, doesn't make it right. Ah, and when we bring that spirit into the church, well, they're doing this over here and they're doing this over here. It doesn't make it what God wants his house to do. Just because everybody's doing it doesn't make it right. Many enter through the gate that leads to destruction. But watch verse 14. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And then watch what Jesus said. And only a few find it. I just got one question I'm going to leave with you. You want to be part of the many or do you want to be part of the few? Okay, you answer that within yourself. Now, here's my admonishment. Don't miss your exit. Don't miss your exit. Escape is how you get away from 
But exit is how to, how do I get to? And what's your exit marking? Just look for the sign that says holiness and godliness. That's your exit. That's how you get off that broad path that leads to destruction. You can't drive on the highway looking around at everything. You keep looking around. How many of you have driven and you look around and you look up and you have what? Missed your exit. Because you were so busy looking around at everything else that was going on. Watch this. Watch what the text. And so Peter says, you can't look around. He says, you got to look forward. You got to look forward. I got mistakes in the past. I've got sins in the past, errors in the past. Can't, can't waste time looking back. And I'm going to waste time with anybody who wants to talk to me about what's in the past. I, I can't waste time looking to the right or to the left because it's going to cause me to miss my action. I have to what? Look forward. And watch what he says we're looking forward to. I like this. I like this. In, 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 in verse 12, looking forward to the day of God. I'm looking for the day of God because I ain't going to be around here when all this here blow up. Hello, somebody. I'm looking forward to the day of God because he promised even through tribulation that he would redeem and rescue us from the hand of the enemy. I might have to go through some stuff, but I already have my exit plan in place and I'm on my way. So I'm looking forward to the day of God. And matter of fact, I'm hurrying it in along. How many of you have prayed the hurry along prayer this past year? Oh, yes, you did. Oh, yes, you did. I know you did. If you are a, a, a filled with God's spirit, Bible-believing spirit, filled saint of God, I know there were days you were like, hurry up, Jesus. Hurry up, Jesus, because I'm about to lose my mind up in here. Hurry up. Hurry up. It, last year it was hurry up. Get Donald Trump out. Of, get him out. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out. And then now it's hurry up. Got this pandemic. It ain't over yet. The science to say diseases are coming back. Hurry up, hurry up. The world is on fire. God, hurry up, hurry up. Come on, Jesus. Uh, so that, and as we're calling to say hurry up, we're realizing I got to be ready when it comes. So I choose the path of holiness and godliness because that's my exit from the highway that leads to destruction. So I'm Hurrying it along. I'm letting go of combustible things. All the stuff that won't stand the fire. I'm putting that to the side. <laughs> I'm letting go of the heavy baggage of the past. The writer in Hebrew says it this way. I'm laying aside every weight and every sin that, and, and that does so easily beset us so that I can what? Run with patience. The race that God has given to me. I'm looking forward to Jesus. There's no place to run. There's no place to hide. But there is a place to go. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. You better get ready. You better get right. God showed Noah the rainbow side. It won't be water, but fire next time. You've got no place to run. You can run to the liquor bottle. It's going to empty out and leave you messed up. You can run to the opioids. You're going to feel good for a moment, but it's not going to excavate the pain that is deep down in your soul. You can hide and disappear, go off the grid, and not try to not be found, but wherever you go, there you are. And you're going to have to live with yourself. You've got no place to run. You've got no place to hide. So, Reverend, what are you offering? I'm giving you an exit. And the exit, his name is Jesus. And the reason he qualifies as an exit is because he came from eternity down. He lived in this world. He died, then was resurrected again. He knows the full circle of what we will experience as creatures of the living God. So trust him. He came from heaven to earth. 
He died on a cross just for us. And now he's been raised up so we can be raised up and we don't have to run. We don't have to hide. We can just keep on the pathway of holiness and godliness. I'm what? I'm walking up the king's highway doing what God has assigned to my hands. There's an exit. Before you take that next step, kill yourself. There's an exit from the madness of this world. And it doesn't include you running away from it or hiding from it. Because when you have Jesus on the inside, there's no one else to hide from. <laughs> Let me say that one more time. When you have Jesus with you because he knows all about you and still chooses to be with you, there is nobody else you have to hide from in your life. I don't care what devil in hell comes to remind you of who, who you were. You, ain't, you don't have to hide from anybody blood-covered, blood-washed, been redeemed, spirit-filled. You are a child of God. No, you're not everything you're going to be. God is still working on you, but you know that you're not what you're used to, you used to be, and you can stand in confidence, in, in, and as Pastor Lee said, you can stand in Godfidence, knowing that you are a child of God, and because you are a child of God, you realize I'm not on that broad road. I'm not heading for hell in the handbasket. I'm head, heading for godliness and holiness. That's my exit from a burning world from which there is no escape. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to share your word. We pray that this word has touched some heart, some mind, or some spirit today. God, we've been running. Just running, running, running. As Mama used to say, ripping and running with no purpose. We can't run from our pain. And we can't hide from our shame. Mm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And we don't have to because you are our exit. We can come to you with our pain. We come to you with our shame. We're not hiding, trying to cover ourselves. Here we are, Lord. Forgive us. Cleanse us. Fill us with your spirit so we can have the power to live victoriously in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. My brother, my sister, you, you, you prayed that prayer with me and, 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 and you realize in your life that there's no place for you to run. There's no place for you to hide. And, 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 he, he, that, and you prayed that prayer. You believe, watch this, that you, you may have used my words, but, but watch this, you used my words, but God received your faith. And he heard what was in your heart. And so my brothers and my sisters, if you're here and you're listening, you're viewing through any one of the seven platforms that we're on, you believe that Jesus Christ has heard your prayer, you know that you can't run or you can't hide anymore. Here's an opportunity to give yourself to Jesus, number one, and then you need a church home. If you don't have a church home and a place where you can learn and grow, and somebody said, well, we're all virtual. Yeah, but that's the power of the church. It is the living body of Christ, which is inhabited by the Holy Spirit a living organism. It's not a building. It's not a place. It's a presence. That God is present with you and that you are connected to a place where you know you can get help and strength and be taught the Word of God and know how to live victoriously. If that's you today, I want to challenge you. Give us a call. The number's on the screen. Send me an email. Pastor C at ubame.org Let me know how we can pray for you and how we can assist you in growing in your walk with God. You don't have to be a, Mar a Maryland resident. You don't have to be anywhere in this area. Wherever you are receiving this, you can connect with us. And we want to be sure 
that you are connected with Jesus. That's the most important thing, that you are connected with the Lord Jesus Christ so that when this world does melt with a fervent heat, that we will see you in heaven with Jesus Christ. That's our prayer for you, and I believe that. And so if you're here and you're connected and you've heard and you feel that God is leading, shoot me an email, call and say, you know what, I gave my life to Christ, I need a church home. I'd love to be your pastor shepherd you in the things of God so that you can understand the word of God for yourself and apply these living principles in your own life. There's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. But there is an exit. And his name is Jesus. He's at the intersection of divinity and humanity, helping us to come out of our carnality so we can be restored with the Father in heaven. God bless you and heaven smile upon you is our prayer. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's get ready to receive our offering. We get ready to receive our morning offering this morning. We praise God for uh, the power of his word. We pray that you have been blessed in this word today. There is no escape. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, but there is an exit. So if you're here today, we invite you to uh, share your gifts and your offerings. We thank you so much for your support on the screen. You'll see how you can give through Givelify. You can give through Realm, your mail-in envelopes, postage, no postage necessary. You just drop it in the mail. We pay the postage. Let me say a special thank you again to our UB members for your continued faithful stewardship. You're empowering us to do so many things. And uh, uh, as we are continuing to expand and grow and do even more things here, uh, we have another um, vaccination mobile clinic plan uh, for North. That's on the fourth Saturday in August. On that, you'll hear more about that. We'll also be giving away a hundred completed back, full backpacks to the first 100 families who come to get vaccinated. Amen. So that's one of the things where that's already in the works. You'll hear more about that as time progresses. But we're reaching out to minister to those in need, and particularly in that community where there are five Title I schools. Amen. Some of you know what that means. So we want to make sure that we are a blessing there as well as here and to all of the other organizations. So the seed that you sow goes to kingdom work. And uh, we thank God for the work of the kingdom. Some of us hold up our, our, our envelopes. Some of us hold up offering envelopes. Or some of us, who we already sent our gifts in, you just hold your hand up and say, God, thank you for the seed that you allow me to sow. And now my prayer is that you bless the seed and the sower. Bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. For those who are sharing for scholarship ministry, for those who are sharing for uh, the completion of the hub as we finish up uh, those works of God, we thank you for those sacrificial seeds. And God, we thank you for what's about to take place and what's you, what you've already begun to do. And continue to bless and show us your will and way in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed as you give and receive God's blessings as you are now here. We would like to recognize our Union Bethel Next Facebook Top Fan of the Week. Brother Thomas Edmonds, thank you for your engagement on this social media platform. Union Bethel, let's congratulate Unity Ensemble on the 34th year of singing praises to God. Happy anniversary, Unity. The Union Bethel Idea Campaign was initiated to encourage and promote the COVID-19 vaccine to help protect against the virus and any new variances. Please schedule an appointment to get you and your family vaccinated. Continue to pray for our pastor, our first lady, our church family, and our nation. Now for the closing blessings and benediction. Amen, amen, amen. Again, we thank God for the word and pray that you've been blessed in the word and that you'll have a blessed week this week continue to keep those in prayer uh, for these homegoings that will be taking place this week and next week and 
continue to watch your news and emails for updates about what's going on. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you is my prayer. And to all of those who've been listening in uh, through our prayer line, God bless you. Amen. God bless you. I know you all are wondering. I, I needed to take a little break at the general conference. But we're here. We thank God for those leading prayer for Reverend Erica, uh, giving assignments and leadership in that regard. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now henceforth and forevermore. God bless you until I see you again. Love you. Praying for you. Thank you for tuning in to our virtual worship service. Join us throughout the week and next Sunday to hear God's spoken word. Have a safe and blessed week.